trip to California was Bobby G's skate camp. Yep, I was a skate camper. And it was at SDSU. I met Danny Way and Ed Templeton there. After camp, they both invited me to stay with them. I did like a week and a half or something with Danny Way in Fallbrook. We skated this crazy ass mini man, these backyard pools, all this different stuff. It was like a whole vert trip. Then I went to Huntington Beach and stayed with Templeton. And then it was all street spots and street skating, like Huntington High, just a bunch of local stuff around Gremick Skate Shop and whatever else. So those guys were my two first hosts. But actually, I had one trip before that, which which shut. It was a shut trip to uh, the Long Beach Trade Show when it was at the trade show. And we spent the whole time in Long Beach. And um, I skated with Nottis and a couple other people. But it was just kind of like trade show trip and just, you know, street skating around the trade show kind of thing. Mike Valley was kind of like the first guy coming up in our area. And Mike Valley moved to California. He put me on World. So I came out to California to stay with Mike. At the time, Mike had a girlfriend. So, you know, usually when there's a girlfriend scenario at the house, you can only kind of stay there for so long. So I bounced over to the skate bachelor pad and that was uh, Mark Gonzalez and Jason Lee. And then I stayed there for as long as I could. Then I had this overwhelming amount of guilt after I crashed Mark Gonzalez's first car he ever bought. And uh, I, I, I left and that's when I moved to Miami. My parents retired from New Jersey to Miami. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was my first attempt to move to California. When was that? 1989, maybe? 88, 89, somewhere around then. That was my first chance, like, I'm gonna do it, moving out to California, crash guns his car, now I'm back home. Wow, th th this is when the story gets good. Hold on, I need, I need to get some sustenance for this one. So Mark is going away on a trip and he permits me and Jason Lee to use his car, like to go to the local grocery spot, you know, whatever, skate spot or something, just like, just, you know, go down the block. I was a year older than Jason Lee, so I had a permit, so I was a designated driver. I'm gonna give you long story short, otherwise you need two tapes. No more tapes, I know. We decided to visit Randy Colvin. That was in Arizona. So we went from Huntington Beach to Arizona. Randy thought it was a good idea to go to Mexico for spring break. So we went from Huntington Beach to Arizona to Mexico. We got in trouble in Mexico City. No, Mexico, a oh, Rocky Point, Mexico. Came back to Arizona, tried to pick up some chicks on the fly while we were driving. Gave them some money because we weren't old enough to buy liquor. They went through this drive through liquor store. They took off on us. Jason insisted that I chase them. We're doing Starsky and Hutch through downtown Phoenix, like crazy, ripping through corners, like closing in on them, taking some red lights, we're closing in on them. I fishtail around this corner, I go really wide, and a truck just smashes us, blows us up. There's a little Corolla, a little white Corolla. Thing goes spinning around in circles. I'm sitting there holding onto the steering wheel. It's all over, the girls took off, the liquor's gone, everybody's safe in one piece. Truck blasted us, and Jason's looking at me going, he used to call me Argway. Argway, are you okay? Argway! And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, and then finally I go, no, I'm not fucking okay. I just totaled Mark Gonzalez's fucking car. And then that was that. Megan Baltimore, girl Megan, bought us our plane tickets. Back to LAX, we took a bus. And on our walk home from the bus station, back to Mark's house, Mark pulled up on us in a truck. And I jumped in the back of the truck and I listened to him and Jason go at it inside the bin. And then when I went back in the house, like I was just mortified. So I'm sitting in the living room. Mark and Jason are going at it in the kitchen. Mark calls me in and basically tells me it wasn't my fault because Jason was supposed to be responsible because he was looking over the house while he was gone. But I just, I felt horrible, I took off. And that's the short version of the story. Oh, this is kind of funny. When I started skating, there wasn't really tricks or all the tricks. I'm like a dinosaur, like everybody, you know, we didn't have Form 1, videos, none of that stuff. So ups, I would run into a curb on the middle of my board and I'd push on the front truck and I'd go up the curb. And me and my friends used to see who had the most ups on what curb. So my big up was uh, the funeral home curb. It was like a six inch yellow curb and I used to hit the middle and push up and it scraped my graphic and stuff. I thought I made up a trick and I used to call it ups and that was before people ollied. And then it was just kind of like that. Like growing up on the East Coast, you're already a little sheltered as it is. It was before the Bones Brigade video. So imagine there's no there was no documentation of what to do on your skateboard besides Skateboarder Magazine. I used to steal those from my library and I couldn't understand how these guys got in that position. So I would do whatever I felt natural besides drinking like six sodas and putting them in a row and slalom in between cans. Like I would do whatever you could kind of conceptualize to, to skateboard. Like it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. And ups was one of my first tricks I made up. Wow, you got some good dirt. Okay, so one of the highlights of living with Mark Gonzalez is an amazing mind. So we're out. Mark normally skated in the middle of the night. He didn't like a lot of people around. I usually would fall asleep and then somebody would knock on my room. I was staying in his brother's room and be like, we're going skating. And I'd be like, hell no. And then Jason Lee would come in with one of his little skits and he would be like, Argway, the wants to go skate. Lee, Argway, we go with the, the gobs. And I would look at Jason and it would totally make sense. I'd be like, fuck am I doing? Fuck am Mark Gonzalez. Can you curse in this? Okay, cool. This is about as much as I've cursed in like a month. I guess I'm a little excited to tell these stories. I'm like, you know what? Jason's right. The we're going skating with the. So the nose blunt story, back to reality. Mark would ollie up and just ride really fast along a red curb and put his foot on the nose of his board and nose wheelie 
like a nose wheelie G turn real fast onto the red curb. And then he would just start barking. And I was like, what the hell are you trying to do? And he's like, I'm gonna do a nose blunt. And I was like, a nose blunt? He was like, yeah, like a blunt slide, but I'm gonna ollie into it. I was like, you're gonna ollie to your nose like that? And he was like, yeah. I go, how are you gonna come out? He goes, watch, he kept doing it. He would come faster. Ollie up the sidewalk, put his foot on his nose and just jam into his nose. And he started sliding mad far. And finally he came out of one. And I was like, and now you think you're gonna Ollie into that? You are bugging out. And then he's like, yo, you should learn this with me. We're gonna be the first two people doing nose blunts. And, and imagine, and I was going, dude, no one's gonna do this. Guaranteed by the end of the night, after a couple hippers, a couple stripes in your pants, Mark was already ollieing into him and sliding mad far. So I jumped in on the game and I'm trying to do my nose blunt. And all I'm getting is hippers. Everybody knows the nose blunt bail when you roll out in the middle and you just slam on your hip. I never made mine. Mark barked. 10 feet or something on this red curb and popped right out. And I watched the first nose blunt happen and I, I, I couldn't even believe my eyes. And I honestly thought that it could never really happen again. Then the car accident happened. Then I moved back to my parents' house in Miami. Then shortly after the blind video came out and people were doing nose blunts and I couldn't believe it. What happened that one night that I thought was a miracle that could never happen again in that parking lot became like a standard trick. And uh, props, Mark Gonzalez. I mean, that's just one of the many, many stories. I'm sure anybody who knows Mark or spent any time with him as bundles of this stuff. Wow, Kenny's part, man. This is <laughs> as embarrassing right now as it was sitting in La Paloma Theater with Kenny Anderson right next to me. This whole free lunch is gonna be me apologizing to everybody. It's like, um, what about Earl? I'm like checking off the list. All right, so I'm gonna apologize to Kenny Anderson right now. So back then, when I first moved out here, I was like an over-involved team rider. So I was in Miami after crashing Gonza's car. I moved to Miami because my parents retired to Miami. I was an over-involved team rider for Planet Earth. Miller was breaking away from A Street and asked me to come out to California in 93 to help him with Planet Earth. Once again, I kind of worked on everything. Graphics, you know, video stuff, and um, we were editing. You edited kind of tape to tape, old school, no digital. So I had the first shift, I edited the first half of the video. Miller showed up to Tony Magnuson's house, the 8th Street house, where Magnuson, uh, Mike Ternaski, rest in peace, we all, that was our compound. I tagged off, and I go, all right, Miller, hit it. Next day was the premiere, so I go to sleep on the couch. Now I wake up, and Miller had finished the back end of the video. Kenny drives out from Las Vegas, we show up to La Paloma with a big three-quarter tape, we pop it in, start rifling through parts. Wyndham, whoever, Mirko, you know, me. And then it's getting towards the end and I'm just like, Jason Carney. I'm like, Kenny doesn't have the last part in the video. He was just like a little am on the team. And Kenny was like looking at me and I was going, he's like, I got, I got the, I, I don't have a part in the video. I, I don't have the last part, I know. Uh, uh, and I looked at Miller and I was like, Chris, you fucked up, man. And then Chris was like, what? You should have done it. So what happened is I edited to here and Miller thought I put Kenny's part in. Miller edited to there and I thought Miller put Kenny's part in. So young Kenny had no part at the premiere and he drove all the way from Las Vegas. And it was so gnarly. We were able to make the video. I can't remember if it was Cat's Cradle or Animal Farm or what video it was. So when we produced the video, Kenny had his part there. But yeah, shocker of all shockers. And, and, and I don't know, I still to this day don't I don't know if it's my fault or it's Miller's fault, but I, I, I guess it was Miller's fault because he owned the company at the time. So um, yeah, I, I apologize, Kenny Anderson. Damn, that's a crazy one. I don't want to mess with Tony. I don't want to get you blackballed from Thrasher. Like, you know, things got a program. They're doing something. This ammo's just... 